Okay, so tonight's going to be a little bit different. We, um, this is the last in my series about turning necks. And as I was turning, I've been turning for the last two evenings. I've turned a lot of necks. And I'm just going to go over some of the points, um, the things that I learned. Number one, you must, absolutely must, in my opinion, blow the necks out. Size your mandrel accordingly. You need to blow the necks out to get them smooth, to get them hard, to get them everything. So I got it down to where basically what I did is I videotaped all my screw ups. I videotaped all the stuff that I did um, working up to it. And just as I was wrapping up my neck turning series, I said, well, okay, we've got this dialed. I turned like five cases and they came out nice best ever. Since then I've actually moved on to a even higher plateau um, and I thought about tonight I did a couple hundred and um, no I didn't. I did a couple of racks probably you know 80 to 120 somewhere in there but I've also been taking some time to go out and shoot uh, making sure that I had the clearance that I wanted because I did 6 by 47s which are easy I know what I want there for clearance. But on the 6 PPC, I turned three different thicknesses. I turned a very tight fit, like under 2 thou for my VLD stuff, because when I say VLD t stuff, I mean boat tail stuff. I'm starting to play with boat tail bullets in the PPC. I firmly believe that a flat base bullet with a pressure ring needs to have a little more clearance in the neck. So you won't be able to see the difference on here. But I turned some with two thou of clearance and I turned some with three thou of clearance. But the method is 100% successful and I found out something kind of neat. On the video, um, I was doing 6x47 cases, so I was using a 473 case holder, a 308 size case holder. When I went to do the 6PPC, I built my thing. There are a couple of things that have changed since the uh, the videos that I showed. Number one, all I had for 12L14 at the time was like an inch and a quarter piece, and I chucked that in the lathe and I made my mandrel. And since then, I went and bought some. I was going to bring them and show them. My, I bought a bunch of half inch 12L14, and it's like six bucks a stick or something. And I cut it into chunks about this long, throw them in the lathe, boop, boom, done. Clearance, everything works really, really nice. So. I will suggest that those of you who want to do it in the lathe get some half inch 12L14 stock if your lathe chuck will accommodate it. If your lathe chuck doesn't want to go down to half inch then I would suggest making a little sleeve drilling and turning a hole through it slotting one side and you can put the sleeve in the lathe slide this. The nice thing about the 12L14 on the half inch number one is cheap Number two, it's only a half inch, so it's not in the way of the bit. Um, I didn't even go through and show any of this because I just figured I could describe it. But the one thing I found that was neat was that I didn't even have to change the shell holder. I built my shell holder so that I can change it out. And down the road, I'm going to be doing some big 338 Lapua stuff. Um, and in that case, I'll change the shell holder out and be able to put in a big shell holder. But... I just wanted to give you some of the ideas that I ended up, number one, I didn't change the shell holder when I went from the 473 case head to the 6 PPC case head. The, the 473 shell holder, the 308 size shell holder worked perfectly fine and it gave me just loads of clearance which I didn't need. But basically I left the same shell holder on, I figured hey I'm going to try it. Ran it onto my mandrel, ran it just past so I could let the wheel sag back and it had clearance, fired it up. I played with 360 RPMs, 600, 800, and 1000. The one thing that I um, didn't like was that when I turn on, by turn on I mean I start at the mouth and I turn into the shoulder and I stop and I've got a perfect beautiful case neck. When I come back out, because it's brass, or gilding metal or whatever cartridges are made out of it tends to fuzz up a little bit it tends to look worse when I pull the pass back off and I dried I ground different cutter bits and I did a bunch of different things 
But what I ended up with, and I'll try to show you here in a minute, what I ended up doing was building my mandrel a little long, and this is a two, two, four, two mandrel, if I remember right, about an inch and a half maybe long, which seems, but I'm, I'm just taking a little slice off. So, the way I ended up tonight, I'd run them up onto the mandrel, cut into the shoulder, stop the lathe, and then I could reach around and hold the case and put a little pressure on it. I don't know that I was flexing that long mandrel, but then I could screw it back off, pop the case out, and it didn't leave a score on the neck. But that way I could turn into the shoulder, and when it was perfect and glassy, just stop. And at first, when I first tried it, I just went into the shoulder, shut the lathe off, screwed it back off, and it left a tiny little score on the neck. And I'll try to find some of those when I turn the pan the camera down here. But I wanted to share, in the end, a sharp high-speed steel cutter bit, um, running about, let's just say, running about, it, it, I'm cutting in this way, and the leading, the cutting edge, matches the shoulder, because I feathered the shoulder. The trailing edge, I was able to use a 45 degree and the trailing edge was kicked up about maybe 10 or 15 degrees and I could cut in and when I went to come back out it would tend to fuzz up on the neck a little bit and I didn't like that. I'd have to go scrubby scrubby and I could make it disappear and it still looked perfect to the naked eye but I've got good eyes. I'm like, yeah, well, okay. How about if I just cut in, shut it off and then just pull this out and it was leaving a tiny score on the neck. Not much of a score but enough that yeah, it bugged me. I'm not saying it was ever going to do anything, but so <clears throat> I decided to just reach down, pull the case away from the cutter bit, and screw it off. And with just moderate finger pressure, I was able to take them off virtually unmarked. So I'm going to go ahead and pan the camera down. Now I'm trying to do this without the clickety 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 people. So bear with me a little as I try to get what I want in picture in picture here, and I'll try to play with a focal length that's useful. Um, the camera focuses really well on its own. But here's a bunch of cases that I did. And if I can get these up and into the light, they are little jewels. I mean, they are gorgeous. And I can't tell on the camera just the best way First of all, I'm facing the camera, so everything is turned around backwards. But that is a good look. These are the best. I've turned a lot of cases. And I've taken a lot of pictures of a lot of racks of cases that I've done through the years that I'm proud of, that I'm happy with. And uh, these, they're not in a good display area because I'm putting them into boxes that I use for matches. I've tried all kinds of different things, but this is what I pretty much do now. And here's a pretty much full rack. These are 6 PPC. And I'm going to try to get not only the focus but the light so that I can just show these off. Like I said, I got it down to such a science that by the time... Here, I'm going to come around and see if I can uh, get up and get a better close-up focus. I think that's better. It's hard for me to tell on my monitor. But I'll roll these around and hopefully you'll get what you like. That is a really, really nice looking set of PPC cases. And hopefully, maybe I have some turned where you can see some of these, about half of them have a very minute score up one side of the neck. It was only I was about this far into the case and going this way or the rack when I, I found a way to completely eliminate that score. Now these haven't been trimmed to length yet. The ends haven't been cleaned up. This is just the rough turn. Um, these ones were done going in and out. And they're still, I mean these are good looking cases. And uh, instead of boring you with 
how they looked cutting on the lathe. I almost, I felt bad because it was going so smoothly and so well that honestly, as I was going, I'm thinking I should bring the camera in here and document some of this. But I was going back and forth. I would, this, this rack right here is three turn to three turn to three turn, all different ways. And then I take them out and shoot them down the range. This is a bunch that's been fired a couple of times. Yeah, I'm going to have to run that focal out. But they're, they're popping out just beautifully, just perfectly. And I just wanted to share those thoughts with you regarding, in the end, I settled on 600 RPMs, which is smoking, but there's no heat generated because it's stuck to the mandrel. So, 600 RPMs, cut all the way in until I got the relief that I wanted at the shoulder. And I don't know whether or not that's going to show up on there. Maybe some of you can blow it up. And if people show interest and they want, I can always, you know, take some camera shots where it's clear. But I ended up cutting in, stopping, pulling the case off instead of cutting in and then cutting out, which has been traditional. Um, and cutting by hand using the, the drill press that I used to have in the background or drills or little motor drives or whatever. Um, I was doing a lot of experimenting while I was turning and essentially what I was doing was getting these all set to a consistent neck thickness. These are set to a consistent neck thickness for my boat tail and heavy bullet experiment and this is actual match cases prepped with three thousandths of clearance um, and the other thing is I built myself a fixture such that if these need to be returned after I fired them a few times and I find out that three thousandths is not enough for the flat base bullets I want to be shooting all I have to do is run them back through a die and I built a die uh, I should almost draw a picture here because this is kind of interesting. This might weigh into somebody's feature at one point or another. I <coughs> always like to end up with some pictures. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Vigi coronavirus in here. And first of all, I'm going to try to find a case so that the pictures... Hmm. I don't have any of my... Well, I might have to forego that. I also did try, and I'm noticing it here, on some of these where I got a little... I turned on and then turned off, and it got a little what I call fuzzy on there. I actually reached in with a piece of scotch bright and I popped a few of them in this set. You might see that there's a tiny bit of roughness. They don't actually gleam like a freshly cut case because I scotch brighted this run. But I just wanted to uh, I wanted to document this part of it because the next thing I'm going to get into with this because we're making cases from scratch, most of the match reamers are not only cut to a smaller neck diameter, but they're also shortened a little bit. So these need to be trimmed. These need to be cleaned up on the end. And uh, before we do that, I'm going to again stick some of these in the gun, run the Teslong borescope in, and show you the clearance that, is, that exists at the end of these necks. Probably do it while they're still rough maybe be able to show you that I think for instance it's late and I'm forgetting stuff but I think this is an inch five chamber inch five five um, in any case I blew these out so they should be a little extra long so I want to go through and show that just turning them and putting them into a match chamber you can still get in trouble because even though I've got clearance um, but the reason for the clearance, in my opinion, 
is that when the hammer hits the back of that bullet, which is probably sitting somewhere like this, if it's a flat base bullet, all flat base bullets have an artifact, well, I won't say all, I make these blanket statements, most flat base bullets have an artifact called a pressure ring at the back. It's slightly bigger. And I think to get perfect bullet release, you want it to pop and then, I don't know if it's that you don't want this scrub, I don't, I don't know the mechanics of why it's important to get a little more clearance on the neck on a flat base bullet. But to suffice it to say that in my belief, when that hammer hits, these bullets pop, they obturate a little more than a boat tail does. Right, wrong, or indifferent? Again, the play, this is called opinions by Al. I generally run a little more neck clearance in a flat base PPC. That's why this rack, I'm getting a little, I have to be careful here because every time I pick one of these up, if I put it back in the wrong place, I'm screwing up. So I'm looking. I'm going, okay, did I get it right? Because I had to take two out of here because I did something else with them. So I feel like I've got everything sorted, but basically these are a little thicker neck. These are a little thinner neck. These are another setup for an entirely different thing. I believe that flat base bullets tend to swell a little when they get hit as they're going in. And I believe that may be the mechanism. I'm big on mechanisms. I'm just guessing here. That may be the reason why it's considered to be hoovis to have a little more clearance on a flat base bullet. I'm going to be playing with a bunch of boat tails and I'm also going to take these, that's why I have one of these, oh these right here are set up. I'm also going to go out maybe tomorrow whenever I get a chance and I'm going to work up a load. I'm going to start by trying Varget. I'll just tell you that right up front. I'm going to try Varget with 105 grain to 108 grain VLD bullets. And without even throating this fireform barrel out, I'm going to start with a standard PPC throat the way I had it cut. And I'm going to go out and run some pressure readings and find out what I can get out of a standard PPC chamber using big old honky monster bullets as opposed to the little bitty. These are some bullets that I used to blow out. These are kind of throwaways. But this is a big old match bullet. And uh, so I've got a bunch of different things here, a bunch of different turnings. But basically what I found out was that I liked to turn in and thereby get what I call a perfect cut. I mean, it's hard to hard for me to see. I should just bring this right. I just grabbed one at random there. I'm so proud of these that uh, this is a one-way cut and you'll probably be able to see even more on the camera than I can with the naked eye. But that's what I call a perfect cut and perfect clearance. On the outside for the PPC chamber. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, go through the steps of how to trim these down, how to clean them back, how to turn this uh, case neck so that it's as perfect as the muzzle. Basically, I believe that the end of the case is some people have said it's the first muzzle that the bullet sees and that's kind of a tricky way of saying that yeah it's somewhat important um, so I like to shoot with very low extreme spreads and I have no trouble achieving that um, one of the things is that I, I'm anal about prepping my brass up which is exactly why I want the brass to last a long time these this was still a lot of cases to make and I wanted to get the lathe cleared out because I want to do a couple of, I want to move into some other stuff on the video series. But I'm trying to run three concurrent lines on here. Um, and this particular line or this particular series of videos is going to be about building, fitting, setting up cases for high-end accuracy, both in 6PPC 
and in a medium range cartridge which I choose to use the 6x47 Lapu of. And just to share some of the things I found in my neck turning to make it simpler, to make it easier for those of you that do have access to a lathe. Um, I think the system that we came up with is completely amenable and completely like I said, it was so good that I'm out there just zoned out, had the tunes crank, and I'm turning out cases, and that sliver is coming off, and it's just curling up and falling in the pile. And I mean, every sliver on the platen looks the same. And uh, I thought about getting the camera, and I thought, you know what? It would be almost like I'm just bragging. Really, it just, these are so smooth. Take my word for it. Go try it. Somewhere between 360 and 600. Um... A nice sharp high-speed steel cutter bit and I think anybody can as long as you harden the necks up and get them to so they run straight enough to make the necessary clearance inside of the shell holder assembly again I have to give credit to Jackie Schmidt for lining me up with trying this and uh, I just wanted to show off the cases that I've made so that we can move into the next I can pop the lathe back open because I don't have my other lathe. I was going to set it up as a collet thing and uh, make a lathe turning assembly and I just I didn't feel like it. So I want to get this lathe open back up so that now the next thing we can do is go out and um, work up a, a 600 yard load with the 6PPC. Find out what it does with a factory chamber short throated. Find out what I can get up to with various powders with big bullets. I'm going to run all the way up to 115s, 100, well, what, no, I don't use 100, 105s, 106s, 108s, and all the way up to 115s, I think, at this point. Um, find out what powders work. Probably wreck a few cases, which is why I have some of my, you know, basically as I'm trying for my setup, I do occasionally make a mistake, and some of these are, have got tiny little flaws in them. So I'll use those to, to test the destruction and never have to touch these good cases until I'm 100% ready and happy and uh, oh I remember what I was going to show you um, one of the things that I did I made a die to reset these a typical bushing type die has got a land in here so you can't get right up to it what I did is I you can actually put a half inch carbide end mill in the drill press. I did it on my mill. You can run it down in and you cut this down until this land is gone. And now the bushing sits right here and you can actually reset these necks and return them if you choose to. So that was one of the last things I did. That cost me a bunch of time tonight. I wanted to recut a couple of them and I went out, ran an end mill down in there, boop, brought it down on an old die, got rid of the land dropped a button in, got perfectly formed necks to go out, reformed necks to be able to go out and redo it. 